clicked on this video, you're probably not charging enough for your handmade items. And trust me, I know how hard it is to put yourself out there and actually charge what you're worth, but I hope by the end of this video, I give you a little more motivation to actually start charging some more and make some more profits in your handmade business, even if it's just by a little bit. Hey, hey, hey makers, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cameron and I run the handmade boutique called Cameron's Key Creations here on YouTube. I love helping fellow handmade business owners like you start making more money selling at craft shows. So in today's video, I am going to help you overcome some of these challenges where you might be feeling like you're not worth enough or maybe you can't be charging more at your craft shows because trust me, you totally can. And don't just take my word for it. I know a lot of you for a fact feel like you're not charging enough. I did a poll on Instagram the other day. Let me read you the actual poll statistics here. So I asked if you felt like you were charging too much or not enough for your products. And 10% of you said you feel like you're charging too much. A whopping 45% of you said you feel like you're not charging enough. And 41% of you said you're not sure if you're charging enough or too much or just enough. You're just not entirely sure. And only 4% of you said that you felt like your prices were just completely perfect. Like not too high, not too low. So it sounds like most of you either felt like you were charging way too little or you just had no idea if you were charging too little or too much. You just didn't know even what to answer. And trust me on this, I have definitely been there. When I first started my business, I was not charging enough for my time, like at all. This video may be a little bit of a longer one, so grab something to work on. I love it when you work on stuff during these videos, prep for your next market with me. And also I just want you to kind of start this video by saying everybody is going to have different goals in their handmade business. Maybe you just want to do this to pay for your yarn obsession, which is totally fair because yarn is expensive. We all know that. Or maybe you want to do this part time because you're a stay at home mom, or maybe you work full time, or maybe this is something you want to pursue full time. Your prices are going to reflect differently depending on what your goals are in your business. So please don't feel like, oh my gosh, I need to be charging way, way, way more if your goals are to just break even. But just from those poll results, plus the fact that you clicked on this video, I'm just gonna assume that you wanna make at least a little more in your business. So I'm gonna help you do that today. Also, I just wanna get this off my chest. I feel like it is totally okay to start by underselling yourself a little bit. And okay, that sounds like, oh, like, you're telling us not to charge our worth. No, 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 no. I want you to charge your worth, but sometimes you have to take the steps to get there. And if that confidence comes from selling some pieces for a little bit underpriced, maybe that's how you get started. That's how I got started. I know my prices didn't really reflect my worth at the beginning, but hey, I sold stuff and I got started. I know a lot of you know this, but I went to school to get a graphic design degree and I actually had to take a bunch of art classes. And in those art classes, I remember them telling us, our professors telling us, hey, you need to charge your worth. As soon as you graduate, if you want to freelance, you need to charge exactly what you're worth. Okay, well, if I'm charging what I'm worth as an artist or as a freelance designer, and I'm going to charge like a lot, you know, when I'm first getting started, and guess what? People aren't going to buy from you because you're just getting started. You need to build a little bit of a reputation first, make sure people actually like your work and get some feedback at first. So I think it's totally okay to undercharge a little bit at the beginning. I think that's completely fine. Or maybe you just want to build that initial confidence by getting something sold. So it's totally okay to kind of undersell your work a little bit at the beginning when you're getting started. I know that might be an unpopular opinion, but I'm just sharing what worked for me. I definitely wasn't charging my worth right at the beginning and I was able to increase it over time. And now I'm in the position where I'm able to pursue this full time. And I feel like I'm definitely getting compensated for my work. And I feel like my prices really reflect my value of my products. And it's not only fair prices for my customers, but I am getting paid fairly as well. And before we dive in to all of the tips I have in this video, I did want to mention that I am hosting a free pricing handmade for profit webinar. It's actually a week from today. So you still have a little bit of time to sign up. I'm going to put that link in the description box down below. Again, 100% free. And I'm going to teach you my six step framework to pricing products to make more money in your handmade business. So if that interests you, I'm pretty sure it would interest you because you clicked on this video and we're talking all about pricing handmaids. So that webinar is jam packed with information on my six step framework. I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing. So be sure to sign up down below. Y'all, 
Oh, I just love hanging out with you here on YouTube. I don't know if you can tell, but I've got a candle going back here. It's raining outside. We got some cozy vibes going on. I've been totally working on this webinar behind the scenes for a long time. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm last second filming this YouTube video the day before I'm posting it. But hey, I have a lot of great information I'm excited to share with you in this video. So we're gonna get started with the first reason why you should probably be charging more in your handmade business. Your experience and skill. Oh my gosh, you are so skilled. Do you not see that? Oh, okay, you probably don't see that because when somebody's really good at something, they think, oh my gosh, like who would buy this because I can make this and like who would buy this because I could make it, you know? Okay, well, there's people who can't make it and they wanna buy it from you. There's people who have wanted to learn the craft that you're a master in, but they actually thought it was pretty hard and it didn't come naturally to them. So they're gonna pay other people to do it. I had somebody at my market the other day go, yeah, I tried this whole thing, but it just wasn't working for me. So God bless you. Thank you for doing this because I love crocheted products. I just, it's just not for me making them. I just love buying them from other makers. So. Pretty cool that other people are out there. And even though, yeah, pretty much anybody could go learn how to crochet. It's not like it's rocket science, okay? Like there are so many tutorials on how to learn. I encourage people to go learn, but some people, they don't like it, but they like the products I'm selling and they're gonna buy it anyways. Also, by the way, some people actually crochet and they still buy my products because it's a different type of crochet or they just like the product I made and they didn't feel like getting the yarn and making it. So there's that too. Going back to going to school for graphic design, like I went to school to be a designer and by getting that education, I could charge more for my time because I was educated in it. The same thing goes for you learning a skill. If you've been crocheting for years and you have all this technical skill around it, you do a really great job with your craftsmanship, everything is really high quality, um, you can definitely charge more for it. Don't discredit all the hard work you put into learning this skill because not everybody knows how to crochet. I definitely stalk a lot of you on Instagram and you all sell very cute things. So I know that you do a great quality job and I want you to just see that yourself. So sometimes this helps me if I just look at everything I made, like all my market prep for a market, I look at everything and I just have to think like, I made all of this. Like I physically, I just, created string, right? I just used string pretty much, I mean yarn, and created these products. Like that's insane, that's so crazy, that's so cool. And you need to give yourself a little bit more credit for the skill you actually have. Next, let's talk about the high quality of your handmade items because I know for a fact, again, I stalk a lot of you on Instagram, I know that you're creating really high quality products that are going to last people a very long time Plus you're using high quality materials. In a world where fast fashion is just insane, like literally everywhere you look or go, there's advertisements for the cheapest quality crap that you could ever purchase. And here's the thing, people buy it. Yeah, people buy all that and I'm like, eh. Okay, sometimes I'm a sucker for like something cheap. Don't get me wrong. I'm what I like to call bougie on a budget. So I'm all for getting a deal, but here's the thing. If I buy something on Amazon, versus something handmade. I know for a fact that that item on Amazon is not gonna last me as near as long as that item that was handmade. It's just not, it's just not gonna last me as long. And here's the thing, it's an investment to buy something higher quality. Think of a car, that's a lot more expensive, but it's, it's actually gonna last you 20 years instead of this car that's a lot cheaper, but you're gonna put all this maintenance into it and you're probably gonna end up needing to replace so much in it in the next few months that it's just not even worth bothering, right? So I always like to remind myself Myself that my items are really high quality. They're worth the investment because they're gonna last somebody for years in the future. Have you ever bought something super cheap? Okay, I'm just gonna share my Amazon legging story. Okay, I'm looking at the Amazon reviews. I'm like, oh, they look decent, whatever. I didn't even care. These leggings are like $10, right? Go on there, I purchase them, they get in the mail. These things, first of all, just not the right size at all, but let's not even, you know, get to that point. They are just completely see-through. I could not wear this to my spin classes. Like, this would be embarrassing. They are completely see-through. And I am just like, oh my gosh, I should have just bought the $50 leggings because I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I'm so lazy about returning stuff. I usually just buy stuff and I'm like, oh, 
that sucks because that is just not good and then it's like I should have just bought the nicer thing to begin with because I'm wasting time and money on these cheaper items so that's something to keep in mind too just know that the quality of your items are worth a lot more people are investing into years of use in your products next I'm going to talk about how valuable handmade is and it kind of goes along with what I was just talking about but Something machine made versus handmade, a completely different quality, but there's also something so much more special about a handmade item. People are connecting with you. They love you. So when they meet you at a craft show, they are connecting with you, your brand, your creations. They like you. They want to buy from you. They want to get the thing that you made. Okay. So, so do not be too hard on yourself comparing your prices to Amazon, comparing your prices to all these places like Target or wherever. Oh yeah. Well, they could just get them there cheaper. Why would they buy from me? Well, people want to buy from you. They want to buy from you. I promise. Let's just remind ourselves of this, like handmade items in our handmade items, we're in a completely different league than Amazon and all those fast fashion companies, all those things that are just being mass produced, by the way, not very ethically sourced items and just cheap, low quality, fast fashion. That's just, it's just not even in our league. We're, we're over here with really high quality stuff handmade items that we personally made that makes them so much more unique and people seek this stuff out. I've chatted about it before, but I would not be in business if there were people in this world that actually invested in high quality handmade items. And those are the people who are your ideal customers. Now, are there going to be a lot of people who buy the cheaper stuff? Yes, absolutely. There's going to be a ton of people. The majority of people are going to invest in higher quality stuff, especially with how cheap everything is being produced nowadays and how mass produced it is. But there are people who don't like that it's unethically sourced. They don't like that it's low quality. And also people like to connect with a brand. And if they don't have an opportunity to connect one-on-one -on -one with somebody, sometimes just that thing on Amazon isn't as special to them. And they're willing to pay more for something that's more special to them, like connecting with you at a craft show. They like you, they like your personality, they wanna support you. They also love the product, they pay for it everybody wins. You sold your item for a fair price. They got a fair price and got their item and everybody is winning here. Okay. Like we can all win here. And that's the thing. I feel like a lot of us get so in our head, like nobody's going to buy this for this price or nobody's going to do this for that. And I don't know. I just, I'm just going to give up because nobody's going to actually get that. But I promise you people will surprise you. So at my last market, I made these mouse snugglers. I was charging $42 for them. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to put them out. I'm going to see how they do. Guess what? I sold two within the first 10 minutes of the market and I ended up selling all of the ones I brought for the full price and nobody questioned my price. Everybody bought it for full price and that is so incredible to me that my own doubts and my own insecurities about that item, I'm like, eh, maybe, I don't know. Did I just hide them and not bring them? Did I just like discount them a lot? No, I just was like, you know what? I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna bring them for full price and they all sold. So this is your reminder that just because maybe you're thinking, I don't know, I don't know if I would buy something for that price. Like, of course you wouldn't buy something for that price because you could make it, okay? So just put yourself out there. It's a reminder to put yourself out there, charge what you're worth, and those people will come. I promise you on that. Now let's not forget about all of the overhead costs in our business, okay? I know most of us are charging enough for our materials, but are you charging enough for all of the other costs in your business? Now, this is something that I put off for so long in my business. I don't know what it is about me. I am one of those people who I'm like, okay, if I just don't think about it, that problem might go away. Like it just won't even be an issue. So I factored in all my material costs and my time. Okay. I had my prices and I was like, Oh, all these other things like my booth fees and my website costs, that's just all going to get covered in the long run. Like it's all, I'm making money in my business. So it's just going to be, it's fine. Okay. Like what was I expecting? Where's that money coming from? I'm getting paid enough for my time, but if I don't charge more on top of that, I'm not getting paid, like I'm losing money I'm on my time. You know, it's taking, it's taking away that money I was making for my time to cover these other expenses. So what I like to do is include some of those expenses in my prices as well, or apply a markup. Applying a markup is really great because you just apply a percentage to your products and that usually helps cover all of your other costs in your business. So I like to apply about a 20% markup. Now I talk way more about this in that webinar that I mentioned earlier. So again, it's 100% free, it's next week. So go ahead and sign up down below because I 
am going to be explaining markup more in that six step framework that I'm talking through in that webinar. Now, some of these costs, you probably aren't even thinking of, but think of your gas that you're spending. Think of the meals that you're having at a craft show. Think of the website fees, the booth fees, patterns and crochet hooks and tools that you use for your craft, packaging and shipping, all of those things. Those are all expenses in your business. And a lot of us are just like, oh, whatever, it's fine. Okay, I'm making up for my time and my materials, but all these other things we just neglect. We're like, okay, whatever, it's fine. Again, I've been there and here's the thing. I'm gonna be honest with you. Those costs, they never go away. They actually just keep going up, up, up. And if we don't start factoring that into our prices a little bit by either applying a markup or applying an additional amount to each product, I'm just gonna be honest with you, they're just not going away on their own, okay? I wish they did by avoiding that, but it just makes it worse. And I know it's hard to hear because you're like, ah, oh, this sounds like so much more work. But again, I explain my whole framework in my webinar. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, again, sign up for the webinar. I promise I'm gonna help you walk through all of that a lot more, but I wanna give you something that you can do right now. So I want you to list all of the things you spent money on besides materials. So we already factor in materials and our prices probably, but everything else you spent money on in your business this month, write it all out. So maybe that was a website fee. Maybe you bought three new patterns and a new crochet hook. So all of these things that aren't actual material costs, but other things in your business that you're spending money on. I want you to add it all together for last month and figure out about how much you spent in a month. Now you can get even more detailed on this. Look back a year. If you haven't been in business that long, you can take a, a little bit of a guess here just for now. The more months you have under your belt in business, the easier it's going to be to expect how much your costs are going to be each month. But I want you to take that average and look at it and be like, oh my gosh, I know that I need to make this money back somehow. How am I going to do it? We're actually going to factor it into our prices. So it's really actually pretty simple how to do this. Now there's not like the perfect way to do it because here's the thing. We don't know exactly how much our costs are going to be each month. Plus we don't know exactly how many items we're going to sell each month, but we can make pretty good guesses on both of these. If you're just getting started, it's going to be a little harder to make guesses on these, but I promise you the more months you are in business, the easier it gets. So I just want you to average how much all of your costs are and divide that by about how many items you think you'll sell a month. So maybe that's a hundred items. Maybe you're planning on selling about a hundred items every month. So by doing this simple equation, you'll get this number and that's how much you want to add to every single product that you're selling. That helps cover some of those additional costs. Now, I don't usually do it this way. This is just a way to do it. I usually apply a markup. And again, I'm going to talk more about how I apply that markup in the webinar, but a markup is a percentage. So I like to charge a 10 to 20% markup additional on top of what I'm making for my time on the product that ensures that it's covering other costs in my business. Plus I'm making an additional profit on top of the time I'm putting into actually crocheting the items because I'm also setting up in the market and I'm also doing all the other things in my business. I need to be getting paid enough for my time. So that helps ensure that a bit more. But again, it's hard to tell how many things you're selling, what your costs are going to be. If you average it all out and at least include some of it. And so you're not just completely neglecting it and you can cover yourself a little bit on some of those costs. Now we chatted about this a little bit and I'm just assuming that you're already doing this. I know a lot of you don't do this because I definitely didn't do this at the beginning and that is charging enough for your time putting into that actual product. Now handmade products are gonna take way more time than a machine made product. And that is worth so much more. Okay, so I want you to start charging for your time. And I know it sounds scary. If you haven't tried charging for your time, and you're like, oh my gosh, this thing takes me five hours. How in the world am I gonna make $15 an hour and actually be able to sell this item? Okay, I know it sounds scary, but trust me, if you stick to patterns that are under two hours, that is a sweet spot for selling at market. Not only can you pepper bunch them, but you can also keep them at a pretty fair price. So that's something to keep in mind. If you can keep them under two hours, even three hours. And I know you probably have this beautiful blanket that took you 16 hours to make because we all do. We all love making those really elaborate items and they're a lot of fun and they're a great way to showcase your skill. 
but that probably isn't going to be your best selling item at a market anyways, because you're going to have to charge so much for it. You should still bring it. It actually draws people in, but I want you to start focusing on projects that take you under two hours and then start charging for your time as well. So you should be charging at least minimum wage is what I usually say. Now, minimum wage is super high in my area. So some of the products that I make, I'm making about minimum wage and some of the products I make, I make more. And this is all just my personal preference and what works for me and my business. So some of the items that are more complicated and maybe I don't even enjoy them as much and I can't bring them on the go as much, I might charge more for my time on products like that than I would for like these super quick scrunchies that I can bring in the car and on the go and hang out with my friends while doing it. I don't care if I'm making as much an hour during those projects than my other projects that are more complicated. So that's another thing too. You can determine your hourly rate and then you can change it for products or you can adjust it and see how that goes. So maybe right now you're charging $10 an hour. Maybe you bump it up to 11. It really isn't that much more for your customer, but it's quite a bit more for you. Those little bits totally add up. Maybe you're charging $18 for something and it's selling so, so incredibly well and you bump it up to $20 and it still sells incredibly well for that and it's only two more dollars for your customer and they're totally willing to pay that much more for it. Well, you just sold 10 of those items and you just made 20 extra dollars that you weren't making before. And here's the thing, as a handmade business owner, you can only physically make so many items. I wish we could make like a zillion things, but hey, that's what sets us aside from Amazon and from machine made items. We can only make so many items. So with that being said, if your prices reflect your worth and your time and your skill and all the things we mentioned in this video, if they reflect that, you're actually going to be a lot more confident selling your products for that price. People are going to value the items they buy from you a lot more. And trust me, those people are out there and they're going to pay more for a better quality product. I got this comment on Instagram the other day. I think it's so important. I will pop it on the screen right now as well and credit who commented this, but they said, don't underprice your items. It actually hurts your sales. Price them for your time and expenses and plan your markets to hit your target audience. People will pay your prices. Value yourself first. I love that. Value yourself first. I love that. And I know it's easier said than done. But again, if you want to join me for my free webinar where I go over my exact six step framework and teach you how to actually value yourself first and at the same time have fair prices for your customers and make more money in your handmade business. So go ahead and sign up for that in the description box down below. I cannot wait to see you there live. And until then, why don't you just uh, hang out with me in this video right here? Thanks so much for watching today's video and I will see you my friend in this video right here. Bye.